Good morning. Good morning, welcome back to Morning Bread and Butter. Hope you guys can hear me. This is Rip and I'm joined by MYK. Let me know if the mic volumes are just off or anything because I did change my mic settings. So I just want to make sure that that's going to be clear. Mike, go ahead and say what's up so people can hear you. Oh. All right, that works too. So for the first time, we finally have the game. We both have it. We are both on PlayStation 3 right now. And we're going to use the online practice mode. You can see we've got a five bar connection down there. And so we're basically just going to show you guys how to play Lars Alexanderson. Lars, of course, a new character since Tekken 6 Bloodline Rebellion. One of Mike's main characters. So, let's go ahead, Mike, and show them some basic Lars stuff. Alright, so, if you're familiar with Lars from Tekken 6, let's talk about his changes first. Um, as you guys will know, his down back 2-1, well, let's just say, in general, all his tracking has been taken away. So, like, everything, you can pretty much step to right now. I'm just really bad, Dory. Yeah, like down back 2 1, the second hit used to always track either direction. Now it doesn't. Uh, same thing with 1 2. Yeah, that doesn't track anymore either. Uh, pretty much er almost everything wow. is tracking. So, um, yeah, uh, that's a big problem. But you still have back 1. But mm -hmm. what's changed about back 1 is that uh, the range on it is a lot shorter. Like wow. right there, it would have hit before. Um, uh, I guess the next thing we'll talk about is his arc blast. Arc blast used to be 15 frame startup, which it still is, mm -hmm. but it used to be minus 12. Now it's minus 14. So uh, let's have. Uh, I'll do it to you. Yeah. I'll do a jab first. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so like, uh, it's minus 14 now, so some characters can launch it, like in a mirror match, for example. Um, also, Brian, forward back too. Yeah. That's Brian funny, it's the same guys. notation. <laughs> <laughs> Large then, forward back uh, to one, what I just used there. Mishima's gonna even launch it too, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. And, uh, let's see, what else has he have changed? Um, that's pretty much about it. Uh, he's got a couple new moves with, like, forward 1-2-1. One, one. This is yeah. gonna be... It's a great new filler too. You could use it in like any combo. Like you could do offhand one, dash under, do a single hit. Wow. <laughs> Weird wall angles. That still happens. Yeah, but let let's go ahead and talk about just like his simple bread and butter game. Like let's talk about you know his basic poke game first, and then we'll go through like his you know his bound homing move, attack buffable moves. Uh, we'll talk about his two stances, and then we'll talk about his combos and stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, well, basically, his game style is you want to set up arc blast. That's his entire game. You want to uh, be able to sidestep punish with arc blast or back dash, or back uh, back dash punish with arc blast. That is going to be where your most damage is going to be coming from. So, how do you set that up? We have a couple of moves like one, two, down forward one, down back one, or sometimes you can just down back one by you know, down back one three, or just mm -hmm. down back one by itself. Uh, it's a good way to set things up, or you can continue pressure on, so like, doing stuff like that, down jab, or just going straight into, like, a full crouch down forward one plus two. Which and that's is a, a tire shoelace move? Full crouch down forward one plus two? Yeah, tire shoes. Boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, usually it's sometimes. Here you go. So just tie the shoes, back one. So these are a couple of his posts that he has that you want to get in with. And uh, down forward one is great because it, for the first couple of frames, it does uh, kind of high crush a little bit. So let's try. Yes. Like right there, it went right under his jab. And uh, it's good, it's 13 frames. You could kind of pester them with like dash, down forward one, dash, down forward one, and side step, like that. And then once you get them to whiff, that's going go for an arc blast like that. Or you can just pester them with down fours or um, some keep out tools he has um, to kind of set up the arc blast as well as like down back 
four from a range, or you could get really ballsy and do down back four up close, but you know, that's really risky because on block it is very large punishable. So. Yeah, but a lot of people are scared of Lars up close just because our class, you know, or he's got like a 4-4 four four or a 4-3, you know, like... Yeah, um, a 4-4, four four, still a great move. Um, doesn't give a bound anymore, so when it trades in the aerial situation with both characters in the air, uh, it doesn't really benefit from it, but that's not too bad. Um, and uh, oh, and another great tool he has is down forward two. Like, mm. let's say you're pestering them with down forward one and one two, and they don't want you know, they go for like, let's say I'm playing mirror match against another Lars and he wants to retaliate with a back one, but I kind of set that up. But let's say I hit a one jab, and boom, you know, yeah. Might That's exactly happen. what happened. I tried back one there after that single jab, and he went for down for two. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's say I'm setting up a jab and then going for a sidestep. Oh, okay, he caught me with back one, so I can just go for something like that. Ah, that's that's pretty dirty, man. Yeah. Um. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, you know, mix-ups like let's. Oh my gosh, MYK just disappeared from the call. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a sec. He's coming right back, I think. Oh, oh that was retarded. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, go on. All right, so as also rudely interrupted by some <laughs> anonymous caller. <laughs> um, like I was saying, 4-4, four, four, 1 plus 2 is a great move. Elbow Corona. It's uh, about 16 frames or so after the input. Uh, it tracks completely to his right, but does not track to his left. But on counter hit, it gives a full combo, so... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, stuff like that. So, you could do double Corona, it's, uh, and on uh, hit, you know, you have some Oki options. So, whenever you get a knockdown situation large, you could always set up some kind of Oki. So. Alright, so let's show it on normal hit. If you try to back roll, you know, you could get like a... a his stance, uh, forward three one. We'll get to the stance in a little bit. But, uh, oh. Yeah, it's only after back one plus two that works if they back roll. But if they, let's say, they tech roll after that, you could just do forward three, then cancel with down back, and then you're right in his face, and you can do it like a full crash mix up, like that, or you could do something like. Wow, that's dirty too. Very nice. Um, so that sounds that seems pretty good. Um, let's go ahead really quick and I mean you basically mentioned both of them real quick So I'm just gonna mention his homing moves homing moves. He's got back one. This is one of the fastest longest range homing moves in the game Is that still true? I mean, I know Jin's is faster. I think right? Yeah, Jin's is still faster um, I don't know. I think it's about the same range as Law's back four now, so it's not really that long. Oh, okay huh. It used to be able to punish things like uh, Heiachi's 4 4 2. Oh, this really? Only option to punish things like the long range like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Law's back 2 kind of situation, but you can't punish things like that anymore. Uh, okay, and then his other homie move, he only has 2, is back 1 plus 2. This move is a pretty good high crush up close, is that right? Yeah, and try to do like uh, down forward 1. Wait, wait, what did you say? Yeah, and down forward 1. Okay. Well, I'll do a 1 2 until down forward 1. Okay, got it. Boom! Oh, holy right crap! Up. That's a mid! Crush the mid. <laughs> That's cheap. Yeah, Lars is uh, pretty good at crushing mids, I guess. Yeah, and uh... So those are some of his mentionable pokes, and we just covered his homing moves, but a couple things I want to add on to his uh, mix-up game. Uh -huh. Is that, you know, like I said, 4 4 one plus 2 is great. It's great for pressuring, and in neutral situations where momentum is neutral, you can just go for that. And hopefully push a button but if you know they're not gonna push a button you can just go for four 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 three risky yeah. but it's huge damage yeah. and you know this is where all the this is what mainly the low that people are gonna be scared of yeah i mean generally large doesn't have a lot of good lows so i mean he's got down back one three you know he's got down four he's got tire shoes but four 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 three is basically his scary one mm -hmm. you know because that one it doesn't require a counter hit or anything and it's like like it says there 45 damage so mm -hmm. big ass damage he also has like four, oh, four, yeah. four, that's a decent one as well, it hits grounded, and a uh, good thing about this is that like, let's say I hit them, it leaves them at zero, so let's say if we try to do like a wall standing 11 frame move, I can mm -hmm. just do like a 1-2 afterwards. Wow. Or if they try to do a wall standing 4 afterwards, I can set up an arc last well. Yeah. 
And like a lot of situations with large, you're going to be looking for that size step R class. So basically, throw out some attacks and practice so size step after it, see if things whiff. And if it is, then it's a good opportunity to throw out some R quests. Yeah, and a uh, couple other things. Uh, 4 2 4 is a great uh, quick whiff punisher as well, and a 12 frame punisher if you need it. Yeah, actually, you know what? Really quick, Mike, let's just go over his uh, punishers. Go over the list of standing and uh, like, while standing punishers. Okay, sure. Um, he has a 1 2 for 10 frames for 21 damage. He has 1 1 as well. Which is uh, 22 and I believe 24, 4, 2, 1, yeah. That's his 10 frame punishers. Not the greatest in the world. Um, 1, 2 gives the most frame advantage. 1, 1 gives the least, I believe. I'm not sure about that one. But uh, if you're going to do 1, 1, you might as well do 2, 1. Because 2, 1 is 24 and leaves you at plus 3. So if you do a jab, you'll trade with a down forward 1. Oh, after it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Damn it. There you go. Yeah, so it's a good option. You could do like little. This is what the uh, Koreans call. Uh, what, is it, what do they call it? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Are you talking about? Okay, patterns, right? Yeah, like after like something like this is like one for down four one or like down four. That's a pattern. Pattern one, and then pattern pattern two or something like that. Yeah. All right. So after that, that's ten frames. Uh, at twelve frames, he has four, two, four. This is great before, like, uh, let's say he does a get a four right there. I'll knock him down right now. Uh, I tried. Does a get him four. Boom! Oh. Splat him right there. It's great time to try to bait them to do a get a four at the wall. Um, at thirteen, he has four, one plus four. But honestly, you're pretty much never gonna use this to punish, except for like one move in the entire game, like Kuma's a four, three, four, one plus two. Uh huh. Because that's the only time you can punish with like a, a mid, a mid thirteen frame move. But for the most part, for thir twelve and thirteen, you're gonna be using four, two, four. Wait, thirteen frame mid shoulder? Yeah. That means you can punish uh, while standing one from Hayachi. While standing one's thirteen. Yeah. Why would you do that? You just use 424 though. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's 13. At 14, he also gets a launcher as well with the uh, 4 back 2 1. Uh, this is even better now because in uh, tag 2, you could use a uh, tag team partner to get an extended combo. You could do crazy stuff like, you know, something like that. Wow. Or you could do like. You know, you could get crazy with it. Uh, with the juggle counter as well. Um, generally you're gonna get around like 85 damage with the full combo after that now. And then after 14 you're gonna be getting Arc Blast. So, Arc Blast is a great move and uh, another, oh, another change that they added in this game is that uh, you can get down forward 2 after it as well. Interesting. Yeah, and Arc Blast for Lars is basically his 15 frame Punisher. It's basically like his equivalent of a hop kick or a down forward 2 that other characters have. Except his is punishable. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't like down forward 2s. So yeah, similar to hop kick. This at least uh, launches all the time, so you got to keep that in mind. So yeah. And uh, after 15, he has uh, a 4-3 or 16. This is the move that you will find online quite a lot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the Shoryuken of this game. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, it's like it's not as good as it used to be as well. Cause like the crush for the jabs as well. Sometimes you get jabs. Yeah, look at that. Like before, it would consistently high crush. Uh, now it's not as consistent. Wow. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely a good low crush though. <laughs> yeah, it's fast and I personally like using it as like a mid-range whip punisher from like, like let's say I'm about right here and he's looking like down forward one or something. Yeah, and then just a four three and stuff like that. Um, and the cool part about this too is that they try to change the combo. Like you can get this while saying two. Since they give him a new bind move on the stance. You can do something like that now, and doesn't always have to do the down jab. You can even do a wall standing four into it, but that one's not as consistent, but it does give you more damage. Interesting. Uh, and on Kuni, you can actually do a Kuni only combo that I found yesterday, or the other day. You could do a Lars up forward three, wall standing four, forward four, one, two. Really? Um, down back two, uh, forward, down forward one. So. Down forward one from the stand. So. Man. Alright, yeah. alright. That sounds really impossible for me to do. <laughs> what is the combo? Just mash while standing four and then four four one two. This is not gonna happen. <laughs> alright, alright. Wait, try it again, try it again, try it again. I wanna try it one more time. Tell me the combo, go for it now. While standing four after that, four four one two. 
Nope. <laughs> yeah, ah. just up two and then uh, down back two. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well that would be the combo. <laughs> and that's only on Kuni because of her hitboxes? I don't understand why it hits on Kuni when her hitbox is so funky. You could sidestep right and try to hit Kuni with down, down back two one and it just whips for no reason. Well, I'm realigning myself right now, but yeah, I'm forward, but just a uh, neutral. Uh, no, man. It, so it's like, oh, I see, I see. So random times it will just randomly whiff for no reason, but <laughs> that's just a community thing. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, at, six, at 16, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, after that, you don't really need anything else. Uh, sometimes at range. You're gonna have to use like back one, but it's not as far anymore. So this is, was the only punish for like uh, Hiachi 442, mm -hmm. uh, these Blazing Kid, and stuff like that. And sometimes yeah. death is at max range, so it doesn't yeah, happen anymore. We mentioned uh, forward, 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 three, and I mean, th it is like a forward, forward motion, and so the mix up he has out of that is basically his forward, forward, two. Yeah. Like, that's the basic common mix up that uh, large players would use because it starts up the same kind of animation. Um, but yeah, there you go. 442, 444, mix those up. So, Mike, let's go ahead. I'll talk about his bound moves really quick, and you can demonstrate them. So, uh, for bound moves, he's got 111. I'm just going to list them off here. He's got his silent entry down forward one. He's got his dynamic entry 1 plus 2. He has down forward 1 plus 2. He's got down back or down 2. Yeah, that's a new change, actually. Yeah, that's a, that looks like a really useful bound move, actually, if the range is decent enough. A single yeah, hit bound so move. You're mostly going to have, like, for damage, you're going to be wanting to use that up more. Oh, I see. So, and then he also has, uh, you know, from before, forward back 2-1, still bounds. And he has his while standing 2-1. Yep, there we go. That's all of his bound moves. Uh, so, Mike, let's talk, I mean, you know, we mentioned there his silent entry dynamic interest. So let's go ahead and tell him about those stances. Um, I I think I kind of missed something though with his full crouch punches real quick. Okay. Touch up on it real quick. Oh, uh, we didn't even do that. <laughs> while standing four, uh, thirteen is while standing two one, a little bit more damage, and uh, leaves you at plus two and them in full crouch. So it's like kind of like the same situation with uh, four four three plus four. Where once you hit them, you can kind of like beat them out with jabs, or you could do uh. Yeah, you can yeah. set it up for an arc blast as well. And then at 15, he has wall standing one. Uh, wall standing one by itself is tag buffable, so yeah. Or you can decide to go under him and then decide to use tag buffer with the uh, silent entry three. So um, <laughs> after that, you know, just like before, he has hop uh, up for three for 16. Pretty much about it. Cool. So those are his wall standing punishers. Now let's go ahead and tell him about the two stances he's got. He's got silent entry, dynamic entry. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> right, so, so cool. That is dynamic entry, and he has, you can do it manually by doing forward three. Uh, a couple things about this is that if you tap up after it or hold up, he'll start sidewalking left, or if you hold down, he'll start sidewalking right. So. Um, if you want to kind of avoid that, you can just do down back and then he'll cancel that as well. And then you can oh. see the end up in crouch. Or you can do down forward as well. So, yeah, this is a good way to like, how, people always ask like, how do you do that mo that movement with bars? Like, wave dashing with that stance. It's just, the way I do it is just the way I do Steve's wave dash. It's forward three, down back, forward three, down back, forward three, down back. That's really awkward. Oh, I did it twice in a row. <laughs> And, you know, that's my advice to anyone trying to practice any kind of movement technique. Practice just doing it twice in a row. Don't try to practice ten in a row at once. You know what I mean? Do two, then go for three, then go for four, you know? And then you'll just have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah, whatever. So, um, let's talk about a couple of the stances he has from it. Uh, dynamic Entry 1-2 is going to be a natural combo high-high strain, but it does not jail like you saw right there. But uh, there used to be a just frame to it. I don't know if he still has that. What's the just frame? Uh, the just frame was that right when the one hit, it was like literally just the just frame, not like a Paul just frame. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, the first hit would turn into a two hit thing, and then it would uh, it would make the string jail. So oh, I see. I'm pretty sure that's taken out though. I'm not sure. 
And I'm not gonna sit here all day trying to find out. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, cool thing about, uh, Dynamic Entry 1 2 is that, uh, you do spawn combos in situations where you can't get a dash, like down back 2. To end the combo, you can get a yeah, 4 3 1, and it's really easy filler. Um, so it's basically a combo option. Yeah, it's good for combos. Uh, it's useful in this situation where you use the, uh, while standing 2 and that down. While standing 2 down will get you into Dynamic, dynamic Entry. Uh, um, an easy way to remember how to get into dynamic entry from any of his uh, moves that allow you to get into that stats is that D E. The way I remember it is D stands for down. So D for down. Yeah. So D for dynamic. D for down. Yeah. So while standing two down into dynamic entry. Yeah. While standing two is the only one that goes into dynamic entry where it takes a back step like that. So it's kind of useful. Sometimes they might try to come in with like an attack, and then you could kind of. That's why it's useful. Two. Yeah, I always get hit by that because I'm stupid. <laughs> a lot of people try to whip punish this because it is punishable. And then I just want to. It How bad is that? Back, which is pretty good. But he also has mid options, so let's talk about that. Um, dynamic entry 2. It's like mid. Uh, that has like a good float property and combos. Like, yeah, something like that. It floats like Steve's Duck 1. Um, Cool thing about that is that on counter hit, it gives the same stun as down forward two. Aha! So you can do stuff like. Ooh! Or you can even do stuff like. Yeah, just like that. Uh, another useful thing is his forward one plus two. Forward three, uh, one plus two, dynamic and one plus two. Uh, they changed it, it used to be a launcher. But well, now it's a safe uh, knockdown move that guarantees a full stomp, so... And pretty much uh, in situations where you guarantee a stomp, you don't want to use stomp. You want to use down 1 plus 2 anyways. It does more damage. As you notice, it does 25 on the ground. Uh, and if you do this and it's a stomp, it only does 20, so... Why? Okay. But is the stomp faster though? Um, it is faster, but in this situation, like, even if you try to get up, it's always going to hit 100%, uh, for 100%, so... Wow, okay. I roll out of this to try to avoid damage on this move. Nice. So that's really good. And, uh, he also has one last thing. He has his, uh, uh, let's make some space over here, and now I'm going to demonstrate his shiny wizard throw. He has 4, 4, 4, 2 plus 4, just like that. Just kind of like King and Armor King's kind of move, but, uh... From the stance, you can do that as well. Yeah. That is cheap! Yeah, you can do forward 3, 2 plus 3. So, 2 plus 3 will give you that move. And it, in combos now, you can do that, and then that wall splats now. So, you can, instead of having to input triple forward during like a tag assault at the wall, you could just do that in situations where a string holds them in place long enough and you could get the uh, Shining Wizard and then he gets a 1-4, one, 1-4 one four once that Shining Wizard connects on the wall. Interesting. So, so those are all his options from that and he also has uh, this into Silent Entry. That's the next dance we're talking about. Um, silent Entry, you can only get into it after you do a move. So like moves like forward, you know, Dynamic Entry 1 forward or down back 2 forward, wall stand 2 forward, um, back 3 forward, 4-4-2 four, four, forward, 4-4-2 uh, four, four, forward, that one only comes out if it connects, right. same with wall stand 1, and just like that. So let's see, what moves does he have? Uh, he has entry 1, which is, like let's say, this, this move is the best for, like let's say you drop a combo, uh, you go for like this, and then you drop that and then the tech roll in between that so okay, you get the art glass and then let's say I that call's too easy to drop. <laughs> god damn. You're too good Mike. So okay, they tech ah. right? Uh no matter which way they tech roll, let's say I messed up and then I delayed this. Because I was going for the new move for the buying, which is a uh, down forward one, silent entry down forward one. Mm -hmm. but let's say I saw my combo whip, and then they tech roll, uh, then I will not be screwed. Damn it. 
Ah. Have to track either tech roll, and it's only minus 10 or 11, but there's pushback, so there's pretty much never a time where they're going to get a jab. That's pretty good. So basically, when you drop a combo and you're in silent entry, go for the one. Is that what a one? It looked like yeah, a one. Yeah, go for the one. Yeah, not the downboard one, because the downboard one is the bound that you're going to miss. Yeah, downboard <laughs> one is going to miss, and it's launch punish while I'm blocked, so. Interesting. Yeah, so that's the new downfold one. Uh, it's exactly the same move as the second hit of four back to one, as you know the animation is exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, except now he's got it out of his stance, basically. And that makes his combos a lot easier, right? Yeah, this makes it really useful, and it's actually only one point less damage than doing four back to one, so uh, it's pretty good. You could do like, uh, like one. four back to one did 59 for that combo. If you do down back two, it should be. Yeah, so it only does one less damage and it's really consistent, so you can't really miss anything with that. Um, next option he has is the Side Launcher 3. Uh, it's a mid launcher uh, on normal hit and it is tag bufferable, uh, but the most useful part of it is doing it after wall standing 1 or 4 4 2. Yeah, stuff like that. You can do crazy stuff like that. And then, um,. So he's the last last move he has is Silent Entry 2. Um, you can get a guaranteed down one plus two on it after it hits. A guaranteed? Launch punishable and it is low, but it does hit grounded. So Hold on, did you say did you say guaranteed? You didn't mean guaranteed, right? The low? Guaranteed. No, like let's right, say it hits, and then I can get a guaranteed down one plus two. Really? Yeah. Try to time it. What if you stop low parrying me? Oh, oh, after the hit. Oh, I thought you meant after the first hit, into the silent entry. I was like, what? Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, silent entry uh, 2, and then crouch cancel, tapping up real quick, and then down up those 2, guaranteed. So. Got it. Pretty good. Uh, that's pretty much all his options from his stance. Uh, I guess you can consider this a stance, too, because he has a couple moves out of this, too. I just, we just nicknamed this kind of demon slip. <laughs> <laughs> he has a uh, human surfboard, which is also a bind move. Oh, that's the move that we forgot. It's a bound move? Yeah, can you use it in a combo move. or only at the wall? Uh, you could, you can use it as a combo at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I don't know, man. Well, let's just have you jump up in the air. <laughs> Oh. I don't think it's a bow move. I, I went through the move list and I went and I wrote down all the bow moves, man. Oh, I am sad. That now used to be a buy move. Yeah. See, man, I'm on top right. of things. But uh, <laughs> that move is not really all that useful because he jumps up way too high. Like, let's say he's just standing there and I want to like poke him with it. Okay. <laughs> right. Half screen away and you're still jumping over. Yeah, the hitbox is really funky. Basically, he does have a throw, right? Huh? <laughs> he does have a throw as well, right? Yeah, he has a throw and a low. So the low looks like that. Oh, what the hell, dude? That low is hella good. Why don't people use that? Oh, launch punish wall. It's really slow out of the stance. Oh, damn it. Oh, I dude, that's hella good, man. It's, oh, good. it's hella good. For 22 damage for nothing. <laughs> dude, that's a round ender, dude. That's what that is. Alright, alright, whatever this is. <laughs> So he has that, and on counter hit, uh, yeah, it is launch punishable on block, but on counter hit, it does give a knockdown, so. You get something like that. Nice. Um, and he can crouch as well. You can just do up forward three by itself and don't hold anything, he will end in crouch, but if you're close enough, he'll actually do this. Do this. Oh, cool, I'm gonna slide around, turn around. <laughs> So mm. it could be useful when uh, you're trying to like buy time and like kill a couple seconds at the end of a round when you need to kill like three seconds, or uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. And uh, on counter hit for the four, he actually does a human circle. So Just duck from that range. Oh, oh, that was cool. Uh, and let's show him the throw really quick. The throw is a—it's uh, not a one or two break. It's actually just down to break it. Similar actually, to it's, that's not true. They changed it as well. You could do down, down back, or down forward. Any other down notations, and uh, you can also do one plus two now to break it. Really? Let's try that. I'll try yeah, one plus so two. It, this, to do the throw, it's up forward three plus four, but you hold three plus four to get the throw out. Wow! One plus two breaks that now. Yep. 
I don't know why they did that. That is really weird. And I hit down back that time, down forward that time, <laughs> down. <laughs> wow. Are you sure? Maybe you could just hit anything. <laughs> I just mashed, dude. Who cares? Like, it's gonna break something. That's yeah. just crazy, dude. Wow. That's really yeah. strange. The good thing about this throw is that the Oki it gives you afterward, um, I don't know how often you're going to land this throw or how often you can set it up, but it could be useful every once in a while just to be like, wow, I forgot he had that move. Yeah, so definitely. Uh, let's have you get up right afterward, after okay. the throw, so you can do stuff like it. Yeah, I'm missing the timing, but if you time it right, you can get a down jab and it'll float them. Mm -hmm. And if you press down one and then pull forward in this game, you can get standing moves right away. It's a little hit and jab with the down jab. So you can do down, down one, forward, down back two, and down back two, and into the bind to get a full mini combo. Cool, so this is running kind of long, but uh, let's go ahead and show them his wall combo really quick, because that's one of the big changes for Lars, or that, one of the things that makes him good in this game. Makes him amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a couple strings in this game where it'll hit no matter what, and then Lars has one of those, and it's his new string 44121. 44121 is useful on combos in the open, and now useful in combos at the wall, so let's show them. So that by himself, you know, all the hits connected, of course, because he's doing it for himself. But you can add, like, ridiculous damage to it by doing stuff like... Oops. And that's really easy to do, so that's going to be his bread and butter wall combo, especially in Tag Assault. Um, another bread and butter wall combo would be, like, uh, let's see. Let's try to set this up. I don't know if I can set it up with the screen, but... Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, with like Jin, you can set that up, and then uh, while he's Jin's doing down back two, two, three. Mm -hmm. While the last hit hits low, you can do that, and it'll wall splat. Oh, uh, so there's dynamic entry two plus three grab, huh? Yeah, and then you get three or four, one plus four after that. Wow. So you could do stuff like it's gonna look kind of like let's see. I think you might need to refloat to the wall with like down forward one and then do it or something. Yeah. So you could get all that after a full tag assault combo, so that's pretty ridiculous. That's pretty crazy, man. Cool, so is there anything else? Uh there's two three new wall splat moves, but they took out the delay, but it is natural combo, so but so the time it will be useful is like let's say you see them with and then you do it down back two three wall splat. Huge chunk of that. Ouch! That was like 80% or something. It wasn't that much, but it was a lot. I can't believe I hit that first try, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. You know, I'm actually putting together the other episode, the last episode we have for Namco right now, and you try when just editing you trying to get that combo was like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but that was on pad, so that took me forever. <laughs> That's true. All right, here we go. Um, so really quick, let's talk about his tag buffable moves. I'll talk about them. You just do them. Silent entry three, tag buffable launcher. He also has. Dynamic entry 2 plus 3 is tag buffable. Not really a launcher, but it lets you uh, tag out basically. Uh, he also has forward 1 plus 2. Of course, Arc Blast. He's got counter raid back 4. Tag buffable? Yeah. No way. No, not. No, back 4. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, I didn't even know counter back 4 was a throw. <laughs> Yeah, hit throw, huh? Uh, he also has up forward four, which is tag buffable. What is that useful for? Oh, what the hell? Because it's a launcher still, but it doesn't bound. Got it. Cool. And of course, his uh, forward forward two and his while standing one are tag bufferable. Thanks for showing us the combo. Uh, <laughs> forward forward two and while standing one. They both launch the same way. So. Yep. So basically after both 442 and while standing one, you basically have an option to go into silent entry if you want to combo from the other side. 
Uh -huh. And then um, you could do something cool though if you bind early. Like you could do like uh, this and then. Oops. Ooh. Yeah, you could do stuff like that. So you just dynamic entry onto them. Dynamic entry. Is that what you did? Four three to go under them. No, I used one plus two cancel to go oh. under. Oh. Interesting, yeah, because le like if you guys don't know this, basically during a tag assault, if you use moves that are cancelable that leave you in a stance, you can stay in during the tag assault longer. So one plus two back, I'm assuming is what that is. Yeah, one plus two back, then you could do like down back two, forward, and then silent entry three, and then you finish the combo off with your point character. Nice. Okay, so so those are basically oh no, the last tag buffable thing he's got is his instant shining wizard grab. Whoops, that was not it. But yeah, you can show up to him real quick. Oh. And yeah, tags with a special like team combination, you know, some he'll do like a team throw with like Lee. I believe he has a team throw. And actually, yeah. Speaking of team throws, I've got Lars and Lisa, so I'll show you guys some of his special team throws. Yeah. <laughs> the other way around is so much cooler, though. I think. Boom! <laughs> Power <laughs> bomb. The best of friends. I got that achievement right now. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that covers. We covered his bow moves. We covered his home moves. We covered his tag buffable launchers. We covered his pokes. We covered his stances. We covered his punishers. His how mix up, four, 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 three, four, four, two, or how three. about Mike? How, how do you how do you beat Lars? That's uh, something we haven't done, and some people have been complaining about it in the comments. Well, you know, like I said, everything is side steppable now except back one, and back one ain't that scary. It doesn't do anything on counter hit, so. That's all he has for yeah. 25 damage, and you can spare that for potentially getting to his back. So, you know, 1 2 used to track, down back 2 1 used to track, and those were his main like tracking tools other than back 1. Now he's got to he's gotta work a lot harder to get, get you to stand there. So, like, yeah, and basically, if you guys are going to pick a direction to step, you want to step to your right. Yeah, you you want to step to your right because um, let's say I do like I'm gonna have rip block a one two and then you guys you could even step down back four. So let's see. yeah, so you could step down back four. You could step uh, four 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 three all the way to his back. Down back two one of course, all the way to his back. Uh, pretty much you could step everything to his back. 442, you just avoided the mix up with 4443 and 442. So, like I said in Tekken 6, uh, that option is still valid where you can sidestep him right a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much about it. And then he doesn't really have a great keep out tool other than like kind of poke you away with lows so, or like kind of down 4 to you when you come in or 1 2 to keep you out or back 1 to keep you out. That's kind of about it. He doesn't really have a counter 4. Um, you know, some crazy large players might do a 4 3 to keep you out, but if you block that, keep in mind it is minus 21, so. Easy launch you, punish. Yeah, you can get whatever you want on it. And uh, I believe if you do like a 12 frame move while he's still coming down, you can still float him in the air. Not sure, but let's see. Yeah. yeah. Still float him in the air, so. So you can do whatever you want, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, not, another thing we didn't mention was that his down by four, although it is a good uh, tool to use, it is launch punishable on block. Yeah. So all the all the good lows he has is like launch punishable, so it's not that good. <laughs> you know, oh. it does guarantee a combo on counter hit, but that's about it. Um, so look out for that for counter hit, and look out for this for counter hit. Um, his size of two is a great move too, because it guarantees a stomp or. Uh, I like to often select it with down back 4 because if they try to move, it's slightly less damage, but you can get like a mini combo if they try to stand up. Oops. Yeah, if you time it right, you can get the wall standing Interesting. Two as well. Um, yeah, you, you know, the other thing about Lars, um, like basically, one of his tools, obviously, he doesn't have a hop kick, he doesn't have a down 4 too, so he's looking for that side step arc blast all day. So, I mean, if there are situations, I've seen people, they, they will tag crash in. And then immediately sidestep, you know, because I think tag crash is like zero on block. Uh, it's about like negative two to four, I believe. Okay, so it's a, it's pretty good range to sidestep from. So I'll be, a, a very common setup I've seen online. I've seen this a bunch because I keep falling for it. <laughs> but they'll tag crash, and I'll do some jabs because I'm an idiot, and then they'll just sidestep me and arc blast me. So 
really something you should watch out for as well. Basically, anytime you notice that they are stepping you after something and hitting you with arc blast, you gotta be you gotta remember that so that you don't get caught by more on more in the match. Basically, and keep in mind it's minus fourteen as well. So. Yeah. Other than that, his only low pokes are like down attack one, which do, does nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, does 12 damage in a 180 life game or 100, 230 if you're playing solo mode. So, um, or you have like down four. Uh, that's pretty much about it. But if you do like down back one three, if they block the low, it auto blocks, auto ducks the high. So keep yeah. in mind if you see that kick come out, just launch him for it. So cool. So does that pretty much cover up Lars, Mike? Anything else you want to, you want to remember? <laughs> you want to remember? You want to uh, I think that was pretty comprehensive. That was pretty much everything. I'm not gonna give all my setups away. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, like that? Huh? All right. But um, well, everything you need to know about him. You 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 have now. So yeah, and that that's pretty much a good start. I mean, I, I didn't really expect these tutorials to go this in depth, but uh, I figured you know it's your character, so. You can give the people uh, what they want. Add a little extra topping on there, you know. All right. So here we go. That, that's about it for today, guys. Uh, be sure to follow us at Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook.com slash levelupyourgame. And check out the website at levelupyourgame.com. Um, we are putting up these tutorials onto YouTube, and so those are rolling out right now. I think today is episode four going up onto YouTube, but I don't remember which one that was. It's either, I think it's June. June Kazama. Mama June Jamma's Kazama. June Kazama. <laughs> um, so that's about it. Be sure to check us out on the website, and we will catch you guys wait, next wait, time. Before we go, oh. I think this move might be tag buffer. Oh, never mind. You just ruined my outro, Mike. We will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Good morning.